Thanks for staying up with us tonight. Schools across the state will re be resuming classes in the coming weeks. And while there's not a one size fits all solution for school districts on reopening plans, there are some universal concerns. Some classroom leaders say they have some reservations about returning. Courtney Ann Jackson explains. COVID-19 case counts are higher than they were when schools shut down back in March. Mississippi professional educators say that's the source of some anxiety. I've had some heartbreaking calls with members who um, are at risk. The analogy that I've heard quite often from our members throughout the state is that teachers are being sacrificed or teachers are being thrown under the bus. Federal guidelines are in place that cover two weeks of pay if a teacher has to quarantine with COVID-19. But anything past that would be up to the local school district policies. Mississippi has what's called local rule authority. Because of that, the state board can't issue a blanket policy on exactly how to start back school. We have 140 plus different reopening plans in District A see their district's reopening plan and then they look down the road and see the reopening plan for district B and the differences and and so that adds to the concern and the frustration. MPE is asking the state board to lobby our congressional delegation to support any federal legislation to offset the added cost of local districts and to waive the state test and accountability requirements. Their main concern is their students and the message from the State Department tends to focus on testing, testing, testing. Meanwhile, the newly formed Mississippi Teachers Unite group plans to rally at the state capitol Friday. They're asking for teachers to sign a letter to the governor that calls for various items, including delaying schools restarting till at least after Labor Day. Courtney Ann Jackson, WCBI News. Most districts have plans in place. The best bet is to check with your child's school to see how they plan to conduct classes. Mississippi sees another record day for COVID-19 cases and hospitalized patients. The State Department of Health is reporting 1,230 new cases today. 18 new deaths were also reported. That brings the state's death toll up to just over 1,300. The number of hospitalized patients also continues to climb to 1,117. 247 people are in intensive care with 125 of those on ventilators. There are 130 long-term care facility outbreaks. Here in our area, Lee County had the highest amount of new cases with 33. Pontotoc had 29. Lowndes had 28. Monroe is reporting 22. And Chickasaw had 18. Over in Georgia, the governor there is going to court to stop the state's largest city from enforcing its COVID-19 rules. Governor Brian Kemp is suing Atlanta to block a recently passed mask mandate from being enforced. In a suit today filed today, Kemp and Attorney, uh, Georgia Attorney General Chris Carr argued that Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms has overstepped her authority and must obey Kemp's executive orders under state law. The suit comes a day after Kemp clarified his executive orders to block Atlanta and several other local governments from requiring people to wear face coverings. Bottoms says Atlanta will continue with enforcement and is prepared to go to court. Pretty nice and quiet out there on our Thursday evening. We've had a few clouds out there, but those are thinning out. But it's still pretty warm out there. Columbus, 80 degrees, Tupelo, 83. And it still feels like 90 at the Tupelo Airport. So it's a warm night. Start for a little bit cooler at 77 degrees. We have a bit of a southerly breeze stirring things up a little bit this evening, so not too bad. Our first alert forecast tonight, we got flex. Let's flex our muscles here and try to get these temperatures cooler. Not going to happen tomorrow. Mid-90s expected. Can't roll out of this body shower storm. Most spots stay dry. The heat index in the triple digits here. And already by early to mid-morning, we are looking at the heat index approaching 100 degrees and likely 100 to 105 in the afternoon. So pretty warm locally and across most of Mississippi and Alabama on our Friday. I'm back with your weekend forecast coming up. A shallow grave off a country road. Choctaw County investigators have spent much of the day in the northern part of the county. According to Sheriff Brandon Busby, investigators found human remains in a shallow grave in a wooded area near Hebron Road. Today, deputies and officers from multiple agencies served search warrants on two properties in that area. Those searches reportedly turned up drugs, money, and possible explosives. Six people have been arrested on a variety of felony and misdemeanor charges ranging from drug possession to manufacture of explosive devices. 
Choctaw County Coroner Keith Cole tells WCBI the body has been sent to the state crime lab for an official identification. The operation was carried out by deputies from Choctaw and Montgomery counties, as well as agents from the Mississippi Bureau of Investigation, Mississippi Bureau of Narcotics, and the ATF. More charges are possible. Some cross-county cooperation leads to an arrest and a murder charge. Sheriff Eddie Hawkins says that Dante Kirby is a suspect in the death of a man found two weeks ago on Burns Road. Lorenzo Hawthon of Columbus was shot to death. A passerby discovered his body. Kirby was stopped in Webster County by the MHP. He was captured and originally charged with possession of a firearm by a felon. The murder charge, it was added late yesterday. Sheriff Hawkins says getting a suspect in the case was a classic example of good police work. This was a case that we, we didn't have a suspect identified. Uh, we started developing information and developed a person of interest and working together and sharing information between agencies and divisions here at the Lowndes County Sheriff's Department, we were able to get information and actually obtain physical evidence linking this suspect to the crime. Sheriff Hawkins says the motive behind the crime, that's still under investigation. Investigators did say that Kirby and the victim were friends. Kirby's bond was set at half a million dollars this afternoon. A woman is charged with attempted murder in the shooting of a Noxaby County man, 27-year-old Geraldine Campbell. She's also facing an attempted robbery charge. She's still in the Noxaby County Jail. Her bond is set at $100,000. Noxaby County Sheriff Tommy Roby, he says deputies were called to Grissom Road early Monday morning. Roby says that the victim was shot in the head. Deputies say they're still trying to determine what led to the gunfire. We're told that victim is still in a Jackson hospital. All right, we're going to send things back over to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Keith, hot, muggy, we, we just need a pool or something. Hey, pool, water right there. Hey, I like Let's it. Let's jump in. <laughs> Can we just jump into this scene? Right? Well, if you can't jump into the scene, grab your sunglasses, your sweet tea, a cold beverage, a big fan, maybe a banana popsicle. That's what we need here tomorrow and for the weekend. Uh, plenty of heat coming our way. Your full forecast next. WCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. I've got my yard work done for the week. I'm sick and tired of it. This rain just keeps coming and coming. The grass keeps growing and growing. But if you still have yard work to do, do it early or late to avoid the heating of the day. It's going to be a warm day, Friday 95. There could be a, an isolated storm or two out there. Most spots probably will not see it. The heat index 100 to 105 plus or minus here. That is tomorrow afternoon. Also into your Saturday. Also into your Sunday and early next week. So check on your family, your friends, your neighbors. Lightweight, loose fitting clothes. Drink plenty of water. Water is always key. And as we mentioned, stay in the AC and limit your exposure to that powerful sunshine. These high clouds in Tupelo this evening. The blow off from some afternoon storms. All those storms cook on up. And once they end, we have the leftovers that will gradually fade away during the evening and the overnight hours. And now we're mainly clear, mostly clear, across the Twin States. And the drop monitor came out today. Just a few specks of yellow there. Most of us not dealing with any moisture problems yet. It's been a very wet year. That could change on a dime, but right now we're doing A-OK. -okay. 74 degrees for our low tonight. Very mild, very muggy. Lots of stars shining out there. And for your planner tomorrow in Pontotoc, 74 at 6 a.m. Very warm early, and that just means a warm day. That sun will just hit you when you walk out the door in the morning. Plan on staying close to the AC, your fan, whatever you got to do to stay cool on these very warm summer days. So our city by city forecast really more of the same in the mid 90s. Today, some of you were in the low 90s because we had some morning clouds and some fog out there. I think tomorrow we're back into the mid 90s across the board. Winds from the southwest at 3 to 7, stirring things up just a little bit. So a little bit of rain potential here through the weekend. Not a lot expected. A little bit better opportunity here for the middle of next week. But now we are getting into that spotty storm season. So some of you could get soaked and some of you may go days or weeks without any significant moisture. That's just the way it is this time of year. So feast or famine, 
most likely over the next couple of days here. Tomorrow morning, pretty quiet. As we get into the afternoon, some of those clouds will start to build on up. Those friendly cumulus clouds, some of those could produce a shower or storm during the course of the day. Whatever does flare will go away tomorrow evening after sunset. Lots of sun early Saturday, a great start to our weekend. And then more of those friendly clouds will build on up. And notice how Futurecast is suggesting there could be a few showers or storms Saturday. That will be the forecast for you weekend. So not really a lot of rain expected Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Mid-90s across the board, 94, 95, 96, a pretty good bet here during the day. The heat index 100 to 105 plus, lows in the mid-70s. There's your very warm seven-day forecast. Hey everyone, we're back with Bobby here at Restaurant Tyler, and we are talking about some of our favorite summer sippers, or our spark. She calls it sparkling summer. I call it summer sippers because you know, in the summertime, it's hot. Hey, we're sipping in the sip. Sipping in the sip. That's right, because it's always always so hot. Yes, that's what we're known for. All right, so magnolias and heat. And what better way to celebrate? Summer than with bubbles. Yeah, bubbles you are said for bu everything. Bubbles are all your best friend, right? You should always have a bottle in your fridge. You never know when you need to celebrate, like getting up in the morning. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So we're going to cheers to that. All right, this first one here is uh, a very pretty yellowish, greeny, grapey color. Yeah, so this one is going to be the Schramsberg Blanc de okay. Blanc. So it's 100% Chardonnay. This is from California. This is probably one of the closest styles that we can get in the United States that compares to actual champagne from Champagne, France. And if you've been watching, Bobby will tell you you can only get champagne, champagne in Champagne, France. There you go. All right. And then you can't do bubbles without having some type of rosé. Oh, yeah, 100%. Like summer is rosé season. It's a fun fact. It people thought that face was going to die out, and it has yet to because rosé is amazing. And this one says it's an extra dry rosé. Mm -hmm. You talked us a little bit about a dry rosé because so, typically you think sweet. Mm -hmm. So that has to do with the grams of sugar that are left. So as sugar ferments, alcohol increases. So um, the drier the wine, typically the mm -hmm. higher in alcohol it is. So as we get down here, we'll see that we go lower in alcohol gotcha. and then higher in residual sugar. And I said that my friend, she loves sweet stuff and rosés. I was like, she won't like this because it's extra dry. But this one's actually not that it's super bad. Fruity. You can definitely taste mm -hmm. the fruit in it for sure. Yep. Um, and this one comes from Savoie, France. It's made from a Gamay. It is okay. absolutely delicious. So does the Gamay help sweeten it up, maybe? The Gamay is a very fruity variety, um, and so a lot of people confuse fruit and sweetness because your mind tells you mm -hmm. that all fruit is sweet. It's funny how our brains work, mm -hmm. huh? All right, and then we have a Lambrusco. This yes. Is fun. So Lambrusco comes from um, the Emilia Romagna in Italy. So this specific one is Lambrusco di Savora. There are 11 varietals of okay. Lambrusco, and this one's going to be 100% varietal Lambrusco di Savora, which is more floral and um, more dry in style typically. Okay, so this one's your kind of Italian sparkling mm -hmm. they wine is, there. Our chef actually studied in Italy and he said they would just send out carafes where he studied in Parma of nothing but Lambrusco, just constantly wow. just carafes. You drink it and wow. they fill up another one. And this one tastes a little drier than mm -hmm. the rosé one actually. Mm -hmm. It actually has higher alcohol too. There you go. The more you know. All right. Last but not least, I love to say this one, because, but I'm going to let you say the name so I don't say it wrong on camera. But it's a fun one. It's a fun one. I say everything wrong, so it's okay. So this one is uh, Bricchetto de Cui, and it comes from Piedmont, Italy, which is the home of Barolo, Barbaresco, and Moscato. Okay. So Moscato d'Asti comes from Piedmont, Italy, in the town of Asti. This is Bricchetto de Cui, which is actually its cousin. So this is going to be a sweet, sparkling red. Now, they do have dry styles. This one just happens to be the Dolce. Okay. So if you like Moscato, you're likely going to And you're to trying to get into well. some different styles. Definitely check this one out. It's great with dessert, okay. great with hot days. It's great if you're going to be at the pool for a while because it's only 7% alcohol. Okay, yeah, and you, you know the sun can really do some damage if you're drinking mm -hmm. alcohol and sitting outside in the sun. Yeah. So if you're looking for ways to sparkle up your summer this 2020, here's some great options. They taste good. They're right. fantastic. Until next time, everyone. Cheers. Cheers.
watching WCBI News at 10 with Scott Martin. Welcome back, everyone. Summer usually means fun in the sun, but how can you tell when your kids have had too much of a good thing? We learn more in tonight's Health Talk with Baptist. Hi, I'm Dr. Andrea Morris, pediatrician at Baptist Memorial Hospital, Golden Triangle. How do you protect your child from the heat? Infants should avoid direct and indirect sunlight. Indirect sunlight increases the risk of heat stroke. Keep your infant in the shade. Use lightweight cotton clothing that covers the arms and legs as well as a wide brim hat. Tragically, every year small children are unintentionally left in hot cars and die from heat stroke. Here are some ways to remain cognizant to help prevent vehicular heat stroke. Routinely check your back seat when you arrive to your destination. Place a frequently used personal item such as a cell phone in the back seat. This will serve as a reminder. Have daycare or child care provider call if the child is not there 10 minutes after expected arrival. Always be aware of changes in the daily routine. In the active child, reduce level of activity to 15 minutes in high heat or humidity. Drink and hydrate prior to engaging in physical activities and during. Water or sports drinks should be kept readily available at all times. During high heat, take frequent breaks for hydration every 20 minutes. Replace sweaty clothes with dry clothes. In the event of dizziness, nausea, or lightheadedness, retreat to a cooler environment. Join us next time for Health Talk with Baptist. Mail your topic suggestions to Health Talk at WCBI.com. Health Talk has been brought to you by Baptist Memorial Hospital Golden Triangle. Alabama week continues on the high school football tour. Stop number 25 previews Gordo when we come back. Sports with Courtney Robb. The week continues as we check in with the Gordo Green Wave. Head coach Ryan Lally leads a team that believes it has was it what it takes to finish the season with a state title. Gordo is stop number 25 on the high school football tour. WCBI Sports 2020 High School Football Tour is brought to you by Itawamba Community College, Cannon Ford of Starkville, Monroe County Farm Bureau, Max South Broadband, and the Bank of Vernon. A business, business. I try to treat this like it's a business like. Back to business for the Gordo Green Wave as they prepare for the 2020 season. Coming off an undefeated regular season in a third round playoff exit, Gordo has his sights set on not only another region championship, but a state title. I grew up here since I was in preschool, and ever since they've been winning, 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 and we just try to keep that going and keep the, uh, keep the same mentality and tradition going. When you don't really get what you're, you're trying to do uh, the year before, it just it just makes you want to come and work even harder, and I feel like we all got that mindset this year. Do bigger and better things than last year. We, we put that in the past. Uh, we just want to get back on the same track and have another undefeated season. I think uh, we got a, a big group of motivated guys, and I know we got some new guys coming in. I think everybody's on the same page. So, so you know, we, we have a uh, really strong feeling that we can win it this year. So I think that uh, that's going to be our main goal. The Green Wave bring back a strong core skill position players on the outside that the team has full faith in. It's great to have the skill players back. They hard workers and they to do their thing. Getting some of our best guys back, it just it makes. You know, getting a year of experience under your belt, a year or two years under your belt, it just it makes everything, you know, a lot better for us. Leading the charge to spread the ball around to those guys is junior quarterback and field general Tanner Bailey. Tanner, he's a great guy. He's great to be around. He's definitely going to do big things this year, and we're going to, offensive line, definitely going to block for him. Keeping Bailey upright will be an offensive line that will feature four new faces starting but the team is confident that they have what it takes to dominate up front. We always say whatever we're doing, we got new, it's going to be new faces all the time, but the standard never changes, and, uh, and it doesn't change right now. We want to be the best that we can possibly be and uh, you know, try to dominate our space every single day. Where we are now, I think that, uh, I think that they're in a really good position. You know, I've got full faith in them. I think they've got full faith in me. And I think that's just how Gordo is. You know, everybody's got faith in each other. We're always, it's, it's a brotherhood. It really is, and uh, so I'm really excited to see what they'll do this year. The Green Wave believe the chemistry they developed developed on and off the field is going to be key in their success. The chemistry in the locker room, it is it's great. You know, we love on each other, and you know, but when we come out here, you know, we know it's business, but it's a great group, and I'm glad to be a part of it. Off the field, on the field, you know, we all hang out every day. We just, we all grew up together. Every time we call each other at night, just tell them what we got. We look at film, we watch film every night, so that's why 
we just keep on doing what we got to do. All of Gordo's hard work will be on full display with the home opener against Oakman August 21st. With the Green Wave on the high school football tour, Chris Bolton, WCBI Sports. WCBI Sports 2020 High School Football Tour with Gordo High School is brought to you by Shop and Save and J Sand Flooring Professionals. Here's a look at the rest of the upcoming stops from stop number 26 through stop number 34. Aliceville will be Friday and Sullivant will be on Saturday for stop number 27 to kick off the weekend and then finishing Things up for the weekend on Sunday is stop number 28, Aberdeen. We kick off the week on Monday with stop number 29, Choctaw County. Tuesday, stop number 30, Belmont. Wednesday, stop number 31, Houston with a new man in charge. Stop number 32, we take a look at Knoxby County and what they're doing on Thursday. And then we head to Calhoun Academy for Academy Week. That kicks off on Friday for stop number 33. And stop number 34 next Saturday, so looking a little bit in advance, will be Hebron Christian on July 25th. For any of those stops you may have missed along the way, you can go visit our website at WCBI.com. That's it for sports. More for you when we come back. All right, here's Comet Neowise. Check this out. We've been advertising this for the last couple of days. In the northwestern sky early in the evening below the Big Dipper, you may be able to see that over the next couple of nights. So that was a view earlier from West Alabama. Thanks a lot to Liz Guyton for that. Here's your AccuWeather 7-day forecast. We've got some spotty storms possible tomorrow. Not a lot of rain expected through the weekend. But it will be hot and humid. Mm -hmm. We know that, Scott. That's all we need to know, I guess. At Basically, this point, yeah. Right? <laughs> Pre uh, prepare for the heat. All right, yeah. Stay hydrated and all that good stuff, mm -hmm. for sure. Thanks, Keith. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow.